So we've discovered that trying to select elements via going manually through the document, for example, getting the child nodes and then taking a look at those child nodes and sort of going through the directory structure of the DOM, we can sort of access, let's say, the body element. And you can also access other elements in the body element. But this is not feasible. If I start adding elements and I start changing elements in the HTML page, the indexes of these child nodes, these child elements can change. I could add another paragraph element and now all the indexes have changed for all of these child elements. So what we want to do is make sure that we don't add any more problems and that our program is robust enough to target the right element so that we can display that information to the user. So the way that we do this is you have several methods that come with the document. Don't forget document is a global variable and the document object has a prototype object attached to it and it also allows for a few methods as well. So you have all sorts of properties that tell you about the document. You can even attach events onto the document which we'll talk about later. But also you have certain methods that you can run that allow you to target for example specific elements within the document object model. So we want to try and find these objects that resemble or represent these HTML elements. So at the moment we don't have anything specific. We don't have any class names or ID names. All we have is tag names. So let's try and find the tag names. So I can say document dot get element. Then you can see you have get element by ID where well, we don't have any IDs, class name, by name, by tag name, by tag name, and it's also namespace. Whenever you see NS, it means namespaced. And you also have a few other selectors as well. So we have get element by tag name, and then I can simply provide the tag name that I want. I want to get all the paragraph elements, for example. So I'm going to say, right, get all the paragraph elements. And I put it in a string. You don't put in the angle brackets. You omit those. But what you do is you just type in the name. And there you go. We've got one paragraph element. And you'll notice it returned an array. Now, whenever you see one of these methods return an array, you know that it can return multiple objects. So for example, we're getting all the elements with the paragraph tag and we can hover over that. You can see and when you hover over that object that represents that DOM element, it also highlights it in the browser for you. And again, you could have several paragraph elements. So you can have one, two, three, and then three, four, five. Save that, hit refresh. And now when I run this again, we have three paragraph elements that we're targeting here, zero, one, and two. So we have all of those paragraph elements that have been returned. And we're targeting each one of those paragraph elements. And you can modify those paragraph elements. You can change them. You can do whatever you like to them. So get elements by tag name just allows you to target an element with a specific tag name. If I wanted to target this header one, for example, I would type in header one. And there it is. Hit return on that. There you go. Header one. Now this is okay, but we're going to select every paragraph or every header one in the document. Sometimes you want to target something specifically, just like with CSS styling, you target something by its ID, or you could target multiple elements by their class name. Cause you've got get elements by tag name. And whenever you see elements with a plural, you know that it's going to return an array because there could be multiple objects returned. However, if we wanted to get an element by its ID, we need to first of all assign an ID. So I'm going to say ID equals hello. Then you need to refresh the browser. Then we say document.get element by ID. And this isn't a plural, it's singular. So you know it's just going to return the single object on its own that represents the element with the ID of hello. So you put in a string, you don't put in anything else, you just put in the ID name that you provided and then hit return. And there it is. And if you wanted the actual object, you'll notice it's actually printed out the HTML. That's just to make it easy for you to read. But if you use the DIR function and say document.get element by ID, and be very, very careful about how you do this because again, don't forget JavaScript is case sensitive. So the I and the B and the E, for example, need to be in all caps. Otherwise you'll get an error. And then we need to provide the ID we're looking for, which is again, 
hello. So when you do this, it returns the object and the dir function makes sure that the object is printed out as an object in the console. And so now I can actually see that, yes, this is an object. It's just doing that so that it's nice and easy for us to see and read in the console. But in all actuality, it is an object that it is returning that represents this piece of HTML right here, which is our little hello paragraph. So that's how you get an element by ID. But there are other cases in which you want to use class names because class names allow you to grab several objects with a specific class name. So we can grab this paragraph and this header one via the class name of P class. So let's go ahead and target P class. So I'm going to hit refresh. And then again, I'm going to say document dot get elements by class name. And again, we have a plural here elements means that we're going to get an array return because there could be multiple elements with the same class name. And even if there's only one element with that class name, it will still return an array. So please do note whenever you see elements, it's guaranteed to return an array. And then we need to provide the class name, which will be P class. And there it is P class. And those two, there it is. You got the paragraph element and then you got the header one element with the class of P class. And there it is. They are objects resembling that HTML element. And you can take a look at this object and go through it and see what properties and even methods are available because you also have prototype objects attached. So you can get the class list, children, child nodes, all the rest of it. There's some fantastic methods that you can go through. And you should really take a look at a lot of these because it's going to help you understand the document object model and what's available to you. If you're ever unsure about something, just sit and read, just go through objects and you'll find all of these little keys and properties and methods available to you. And you can understand things a lot more when you do this. Whenever I'm sort of new to a framework, I'll just sit and read the code that it outputs. And it tells me a lot about that particular framework. And that's a top tip for you. So that's why we have the paragraph and we have the header one, both with the P class. So you can get elements by ID. You can get elements by the class name and also you can get elements by their tag name. So that's fine. And there are many other things that you could do here. So you've got get elements by ID class name by their name. So you could just give them a name reference by tag name and also tag name NS. But you're probably going, well, that's fantastic, Lawrence. But what about CSS selectors? Can I use CSS selectors to target DOM elements and return that object just like I would in CSS where I target elements? So let's go ahead and take a look. You can say document dot query selector all you want to go with all because it provides you all the possible selectors and all the support as well query selector all you could just say query selector if you really wanted to and then provide the string and the string is going to be the css selector so if you wanted to select the element with the id of hello well if we know css you type in the hash and you say hello and there is my paragraph element. Now the query selector all by the way will guarantee an array that will be returned. It always returns an array even if you're selecting an element with an ID. So we're saying hash hello. Then also you could select an element via its class you use the dot syntax and say p class. And there it is. It's selected both the paragraph and the header one with the class of p class. But also you could combine them as well. So you have hash hello. And also I'd like to target all the elements with the p class as well. Let's hit return. And there you go. It's now returned the element with the ID of hello and both the elements with the class of p class. Now I'm just going to give you an advanced CSS selector to finish off. So what we can do is we can have the metadata that you can add. So I'm going to say data content and we're going to say one, two, three. And then also I'm going to have a header and I'm going to have a span in here. Right. So what I want to do is I want to select this span directly and I also want to target this element here as well. So these two elements we are going to target. 
So let's go ahead and refresh the page so everything shows up where it needs to. And then what I'm going to do is say document.query selector all. And I'm going to provide the CSS selector string. The first thing I want to do is target the paragraph element. And I'm going to use the brackets. And I want to say target the element with the attribute, which is data hyphen content. And not only can I check for the attribute, I can also check that the attribute has the value of one, two, three. And again, be very, very careful here. You can see that I'm using single quotes on the outer edge and double quotes in the inner. Very, very important because if this is single, can you see what happens? That turns into a number and you've got a string surrounding it by the left and the right. There are two separate strings now. That's not what we want. We want this as one whole string. So we can see by syntax highlighting that this is all red, so it's all a string. So I'm targeting the paragraph element with the attribute data content here and it must be equal to one, two, three as its value. Then I'd like to select some more elements. And I want to select the header one. So I can say, right, target the body element. And then I want to target the header one element that's a direct child. And I want to target that header one element via P class. And then I also want to target the span element. Again, this span element must be a direct child of the header one. So the span is a direct child of the header one and the header one is a direct child of the body. And so this is what we're doing here. So we've actually got a pretty advanced selector. I'm just demonstrating what you can do. So I'm just going to hit return and you'll notice it's returned both the paragraph with the data content attribute equal to one, two, three, and also the span element which is here and it's been directly selected from the body straight down to the header one. And that header one must have the P class class on it. And it must also select the span right there. And it returns it like so. And if I was to take away that class, for example, would it still work? The answer is no. So if I hit return, it's only gonna give me the paragraph because it's looking at the body, then it's looking at a header one with the class of P class, that header one no longer has that class. And so it's just gonna stop there. So that is using the query selector all. So you can still use CSS selectors to target DOM elements. This is a more efficient way of doing it. It's easier and the JIT compiler itself is looking through the whole document object model and finding it for you. This is very important. So there is an advanced CSS selector. Obviously, I know that you don't need to do this, you know, body.h1p class span, but I'm giving you a demonstration of how you can use those advanced CSS selectors in JavaScript to target DOM elements, to pull that DOM element out, change the object, modify that in the browser, and away you go.